In 2005, a strange thing happened in a village. Before, Tim, who often ate at nearby people's houses and grew up, suddenly found a wild wolf covered in blood when he was collecting herbs in the mountains and forests. Later, he brought it home for treatment. Although the wild wolf was diagnosed as disabled for life, Tim still did not abandon it in the wild, but took good care of it. At that time, the wild wolf cost at least 150 on a day to eat meat, but what Tim didn't expect was that he would be so rich in the future. It was because of this wild wolf that Tim could make millions a year. What exactly happened? Tim was born in a remote mountainous area. His parents unfortunately encountered a natural disaster when they went up the mountain to collect herbs. So Tim always knew that he had no parents. Fortunately, the villagers treated him fairly well and were willing to jointly raise, take care of and help him. Growing up in that environment, Tim was always hardworking and honest. At that time, the local medical conditions were not advanced and even the hospitals were in short supply, so the local villagers always insisted on going up the mountain to collect medicines, as did Tim, and there were many medicine baskets in his home. Just one evening in 2005, Tim, who was gathering herbs on the mountain, was suddenly attracted by a deep voice. When he got closer, he realized that it was a wild wolf that was caught in the cracks of the stone and couldn't move, and next to it was a flowing stream. Looking at the trapped wild wolf, Tim thought of himself alone, so he decided to rescue the wild wolf. He first approached the wild wolf cautiously, but the wild wolf was very defensive. Seeing a stranger approaching, it didn't dare to move, and then fiercely tried to scare Tim away. In order to let the wild wolf drop its guard, Tim put the hoe used for collecting medicine aside, and only took a stick and carefully handed it to the wild wolf's mouth to signal it to bite, and then he gently hugged it. In the end, he rescued the wild wolf. After that, Tim took out some collected herbs from the basket, crushed them into a ball in his hands, and applied them to the wild wolf's wound. Looking at Tim, who had been helping itself, the wild wolf only whimpered as Tim cleaned the wound, and after that it was quiet, and just kept looking at Tim. When Tim had bandaged the wound, he got up and packed his backpack and tools to go home. Just as he was about to leave, the corner of his trousers was pulled. He looked down and saw that the wild wolf did not leave but showed a reluctant look, and its whimpering sound was actually intimate. Worried that the wild wolf would be hurt again, the kind Tim brought it home. Originally, he just wanted to quietly let it heal and return it to the forest, but it was found. The neighbors soon learned that Tim had adopted a wild wolf from nature. They all came to persuade Tim that wild wolf was very difficult to tame. They said that if the wild wolf healed its wounds, it might regain its bestiality and suddenly attack humans, so he would be dangerous. Tim felt that there was some truth in what they said, so he made up his mind to throw the wild wolf that had not healed back on the mountain. No one knew why during the rescue process, Tim couldn't bear to send the wild wolf back to the mountain. After that, he took advantage of the darkness to hide the wild wolf from the neighbors and other villagers. It built a small shed, like raising this wild wolf as a pet dog. After that, Tim cut branches from the mountain to build a fence for the wild wolf. It had to be treated in that pen until it was healed. If the wild wolf healed, Tim would put it back in the forest, but gradually the villagers seemed to have changed their attitude towards this wild wolf. The villagers who heard some rumors brought good news to Tim. They said that in addition to people selling flowers and vegetables, there were also people selling dogs and cats. They said that if their animals were of a better breed, looked good and were in good health, they would be worth a lot. It occurred to Tim that if the wild wolf would mate with a dog, he might get rich. 
After that, Tim took good care of the disabled wild wolf. After it healed, he put a bitch in the fence. But that seemed difficult. Tim gradually discovered that the wild wolf and the bitch lived very close, but they did not mate. In simple terms, they didn't seem to like each other, so they didn't want to live together. So Tim wondered if he was doing something wrong. He wondered if he was so focused on money that he was ignoring the feelings of animals. So he wanted to put the wild wolf back in the forest, but the wild wolf really regarded Tim as its master. No matter where Tim was, it followed him and was unwilling to leave. That's when Tim couldn't bear it again. He joked that the wild wolf was not reluctant to bear him but the meat. He praised this wild wolf for being smart, but with his financial situation, he couldn't afford this wild wolf. The wild wolf seemed smart and knew Tim's concerns. A few days later, Tim unexpectedly discovered that the wild wolf was willing to mate with another bitch living in that fence. Two and a half months later, the bitch gave birth to four healthy wolf dogs, without a hitch and their cries were loud. Tim found another bitch for the wild wolf, when he found out that it worked. Although this wild wolf was somewhat disabled, it was a pure wild wolf. In the process of helping the wild wolf to mate and breed the female dog, he spread the word that the wolf dogs he bred could be sold, which attracted many customers who were interested in wolf dogs. So Tim's business improved, but he found that by selling wolf dogs alone, he could only support himself. Before, he had been helped by the villagers, so he wanted to make them rich together within his ability. So Tim was trying again. Soon after, he thought of a new method, that is, to expand the industrial chain through wolf dogs and develop other consumer projects. For example, wolf dogs pups could be sold for different prices, by breed as well as by their looks, and health and differentiated between new and old customers. Among other things, Tim built farm restaurants and used wolf dogs design projects to develop tourism to boost the local economy. After that, Tim successfully helped the villagers get rich together. After 2012, Tim was making millions a year. However, there was an important turning point in Tim's career development, when one day Tim suddenly found out that when he was sorting wolf dogs, the wolf dogs would react extremely violently, so Tim thought they might scare off some tourists. But what he didn't expect was that some tourists were very bold and showed real and natural reactions to animals that they especially liked to see. After being inspired, Tim designed some new game projects to promote the local tourism economy. For example, he designed Wild Wolf Island Crossing, Wild Wolf Valley, Wild Wolf Taming Performance and Wild Wolf Swimming together. Yet the saying goes that the highest branch is not the safest roof. Although Tim's business was booming, many people questioned his success. For example, in the beginning, a lot of people bullied Tim for being illiterate and thought he didn't understand the law, so they told him it was illegal to raise wild wolves. Tim was concerned that he was doing something illegal, so he immediately hired a lawyer. With the help of an expert, Tim finally felt relieved. In fact, it is allowed to raise wild wolves in our country, but because wild wolves have fierce instinctive reactions, relevant departments will suggest that we try to give them cooked meat instead of raw meat. When raising wild wolves, the large consumption of raw meat stimulates the wildness of the wild wolf. After Tim made some money, he hired an animal nutritionist to help him raise some healthy, pure wolf dogs that could meet the different needs of his clients. Various doubts did not make Tim give up. At that time, whenever a customer asked him relevant questions, he would take out various quality certificates that had been prepared before. With quality assurance, Tim's farm and tourism industry was booming. In fact, whether it is independent or cooperative, to get rich, we will encounter all kinds of doubts and setbacks. But as long as we have firm beliefs and don't give up and keep moving forward, maybe we can be as successful as Tim. 
We have been advocating to protect the diversity of animals, so we should explore the right way to get rich on the premise of caring for nature and protecting wild animals. This is today's story. Click to subscribe for more interesting stories.